Yeah. Welcome to another episode of I Am The Change podcast, brought to you by DTR Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I'm Sharice, here with my amazing co-host, Jason Redman. Welcome, Jason. Hello, Sharice. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, other than some computer uh, issues, hey, I am great. Awesome, awesome. I'm excited about our guest today. So you, a couple weeks ago, you reached out to the wonderful campus of NCCU and got Dr. Ingrid McCree, Wicker McCree. So I had to follow up from the sloping hills and verdant greens of NCCU where I found Jashelle Mitchell several years ago who has ventured on since then. And okay. so I, I had to follow up with another powerhouse. <laughs> so, Jashelle, welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. No, so, thank you for being here. Yes, so, ma'am. like I said, I met Jashelle at North Carolina Central. She was football director of football operations. Correct. Correct. Don't they call but that Dobo? That's basketball. Oh. Okay. DFO. Okay. So it'll be FOBO. Nope, DFO. Whatever. Okay. I'm I'm doing that. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I was, to, I was trying to get all the good acronyms in there. Sound good. Never mind. So Jashelle, since North Carolina Central, what have you been doing? Oh Lord Jesus. Uh since North Carolina Central. Um, I spent three years at the National Football League under the oh. leadership of Troy Benson. Uh, Executive Vice President of Football Operations. Um, I served in the DEI area. I was the Manager of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion for our HBCU partnerships. Mm -hmm. Um, And from the league office, I came home. Home is Flint, Michigan. Uh, I currently serve as the Senior University Relations Manager uh, for the HBCU division of Dan Gilbert's Rocket Companies out of Detroit. And uh, I manage 15 HBCU relationships with us at Rocket Companies. So, Michelle, I have a question. Yes, sir. And this is going to probably be the most uh, obvious question I'm going to ask. Michelle, you don't you, you don't look like you play football. No, sir. Uh, I didn't. Uh, it's it's more about relationships. Okay. Um, I got to North Carolina Central. Um, off a relationship. Um, the, head coach, the head coach at the time was Jerry Mack. Uh, Jerry mm-hmm. Mack and I worked together at the University of Memphis. Uh, so I definitely, you know, don't take lightly the people that you work with, the people that you're around, because you never know the leadership or the positions that they may come across. And they remember how you treated people, how you communicated, the type of work that you did. And that's how I got to North Carolina Central University. So um, he got the head coaching job. Uh, He reached out asking me to be his director of football operations. I had no clue what that meant. I said, kind of give me a high level view of what that is. Mm -hmm. Basically, I was I was his right hand and left hand when he didn't have the play sheet in his hand. So it Mm -hmm. was definitely an opportunity for me to uh, be one of 10 in the country at the time. Uh, so far, uh, many more women have uh, had that role uh, at respective universities, Power Five, Group of Five, HBCU, FCS, and I'm proud to see that type of legacy uh, that has come across since I have served as the Director of Football Operations for North Carolina Central University. So you, you said you got to North Carolina Central on a relationship. So let me let me back up. I, I want to know, like, <clears throat> And then if I say the name wrong, I apologize. Jashelle. Yes, sir. Okay. So I want to know Jashelle Mitchell from Flint, Michigan, when uh, <laughs> she was examining MC Breeze to, to see, 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 a little something. Yeah. How did you get from Flint, Michigan to, you know, get to that relationship in Memphis with uh, Jerry Mack? 
Uh, no doubt about it. No question. Thanks for asking. Um, I was a student athlete, women's basketball, softball, and track. Um, oh, wow. I played basketball at Bethune Cookman University, Hale Wildcats, so I'm oh, an HBC wow. grad as well. Okay. Um, from there, my first job was in operations. Um, I served under Hall of Famer Joan Bombasini out at the University of Arizona, uh, mm -hmm. also famous for men's basketball, Coach Lute Olson. Uh, had a front row seat to uh, working with uh, the Arizona Wildcat Athletic Department. Mm -hmm. From Arizona, I went back home to Bethune-Cookman to serve as the academic advisor for uh, athletics. Um, I took care of men and women's basketball, softball, and baseball. Uh, from Bethune-Cookman, I went to University of Memphis. Uh, at the time, I worked for Larry Porter, then inherited Justin Fuente. Um, and then was promoted within the athletic department to the athletic director, um, which was R.C. Johnson at the time. He ended up retiring. And then I worked for uh, Tom Bowen and Ren Baker, who's currently the AD at North Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. So athletic administration was kind of my path. I originally wanted to be a director of athletics at the same time as you guys see and know uh, it's it's the wild wild west, depending on who you're asking. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I, I appreciate being able to have a kind of a, a pocket corner seat to view and see the div different avenues of what's going on in collegiate athletics at this particular time without necessarily having to be in it just yet. I take my current role as uh, corporate leadership and professional development. Um, and then North Carolina Central, uh, like I stated, uh, Jerry and I met uh, at Memphis when he was a receivers coach uh, for us. You know, like I said, I always remained respectful, did my job. And then, you know, I, as, as Coach Prime says, when you get the call to ball, I got the call to ball. Uh, so that, you that thing to the hoop. Huh? You took that thing to the hoop. Hey, slam dunk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I appreciated him even choosing me to do and trusting me to do that role. Um, I worked there for two years as the DFO. I was promoted to the assistant director of athletics and then eventually promoted to uh, Dr. Wicker McCree's leadership council for assistant AD for internal operations, assistant senior woman administrator. And then uh, while I was at North Carolina Central, I was chosen by the NFL uh, to participate in the Women's Careers and Football Forum, which is led by Troy Vincent and Sam Rappaport. And uh, from there, I got a call to ball again. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I got a call. They were having some, uh, some, some transition uh, in the league office out of New York. And uh, I got the call to ball. So I went to NYC. Uh, from NYC, again, you know, Michigan family home is home. My, my dad ended up getting sick at the beginning of COVID and uh, family is the most important thing to me. So I had to pivot and make some changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So I came on home and now I currently run uh, Dan's HBCU division for our um, internships and uh, opportunities with Rocket Companies headquartered in Detroit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah man, I, I feel, the, I feel the, the, the pivot. I feel the movement. I feel the passion. And everything you're talking about, a lot of times in athletics, like you say, I call the ball. You got to be ready. Like when you go to practice, you could be that guy sitting in the corner, not like, getting no reps. You got to be ready. You got to be. You got to be mentally prepared and locked in. So anytime they get your number called, hey, I'm ready, coach. Put me mm -hmm. in. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a nice story right there. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So to show, I knew Jason would be excited. Jason has a passion for HBCUs. Yes. Um, and I always mess with him about his school because I never heard of Knoxville College until I met him. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. I am I am a proud alum. And here, hey, so I'm gonna make a connection the week that we had together. So uh we so when I was at Knox, this this is how dope Knoxville College is. We played Bethune Cookman in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida in 1994. And we beat Bethune Cook in the Gator Bowl in 1994, last second touchdown. Nobody knows that, but everybody that went, everybody that went to Bethune in 1994, they know that we whooped that tail. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's, yeah, it's, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let me, let me tell this moment. My, my go ahead. Moment. And my line brother, Terry Sims, and mm -hmm. my line brother, Darren Hayes, both coaching that coaching staff. Terry's the head coach. And uh, Darren Hayes is the defensive coordinator. Yeah. No so question. Shout out, to the, shout out to the Wildcats that uh, were doing cooking. No question. Coach Sims is a great friend of mine. I just actually, I was at the game in Jacksonville 
Um, and uh, I definitely, I, I'm always rooting for my Wildcats and I wish Coach Sims and the Wildcats uh, the best at this particular time, especially during their rebuild from Hurricane Ivan. Yeah, yes, yes. They've been, they've been, they've been through it. Uh, I, I got to say, that's uh, my guys. Those my guys. Yeah. So I hold those guys dear to my heart. With my, when I root for them, I wear my KC stuff under there. So, so wear, I do, I do. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so now, so family is everything. You, you're working with, uh, with Dan Gilbert's HBCU initiative for, for internships for HBCU graduates, how important is that relationship for you to give back to HBCU students that are coming out into the workforce? I, I don't want to say they need a I need a helping hand, but need the door cracked open so okay, they can. Yeah. No question, it's very important to me. I believe in authenticity. Uh, I believe in in true intent. Um, and I don't take that lightly. Uh, being an HBCU graduate, I always have the thought process of, well, when I was a student athlete, I wish I had this, but, or when I have the resources or the access or the opportunities for these students to get experienced and advanced, uh, I'm always quick to pick up the phone talk to coaches, talk to ADs, talk to presidents, talk to uh, faculty athletic representatives, shooting this, shooting them information that I have because, you know, it's, it doesn't go well for me to know or have access to many rooms that most people don't and don't share it, mm -hmm. you know, so I definitely be sure I tap in, you know, to my HBCU roots for students and, and schools and universities. I just left Jackson State's homecoming literally off a flight today. So it was dope too. I saw it, 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 was, it was beyond dope, but that's one <laughs> yeah. of the partners that I manage for my 15 HBCU. So shout out to the JSU team on uh, the athletic department under uh, Vice President Ashley Robinson. Gotcha. So you said you have 15. I'm sorry, Sharice, I'm hogging this. No, I, I go really ahead. Talk. I'm going to let you add so, it. Go ahead. So you said you have 15 <laughs> schools that you manage. What Can you name them? I'm, of I'm, course. Excuse. I'm, of course. <laughs> well, I give you my first four to where we're official uh, athletic sponsors for uh, the official mortgage uh, partner of these four schools, and that's Jackson State University, that's Gramlin State University, that's Southern University, and that's Howard University. We are actually actual sponsors for the athletic department. Um, to just a, a, another high level view, Florida A&M, Tennessee State, Bethune Cookman, Alabama State. Um, who else uh, off the top of my head, but that's a high level view off the top of my head without just kind of going fully down the line. Gotcha. Gotcha. We got to get you into Texas, get you down to Texas Southern and pray. Yes, I talked I talk to Dr. Cavill quite a bit. We're trying to schedule some things for the sports management and athletic department and Dr. Fisher as well. She's one of my sorority sisters. Uh, mm -hmm. So definitely want to uh, spread the wealth and uh, get down to Houston for those students as well. Also, we got to get you to get some smaller HBCUs too, like the Wiley Colleges, the Fisk University, the Philander Smiths, yeah, mm -hmm. the Miles Colleges. Yeah, we, we, need, we need money to play in college. We need money to. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. It's definitely a strategy to it. Um, we definitely have relationships. You know, we are in Michigan and we are mindful of students and HBCUs being mostly in the Southeast. Uh, right. And sometimes Michigan isn't on their radar. Sometimes, you know, when they hear Detroit, they hear cops or first 48 and the students mm -hmm. openly tell us that and until we can change that narrative and showcase who we are and what we do uh, that's going to be some of the uh, you know conversations we need to have for them to even consider us for their internship and uh, professional development opportunities here in uh, Detroit and I, I think also yeah, you, that's crazy they, they might not think first of Detroit but I think I think that given an opportunity because to me a smaller HBCU needs that opportunity to get in the door. And so for me, Knox, I'm always, I'm big on HBCUs, period, but the smaller ones, are, like to me, are the ones that are, that sometimes get overlooked. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's easy to, it's easy to think of Nashville, Tennessee and think of Tennessee State, but then you'll forget about this. You'll forget, and if you go West in the state, you'll think about, you know, you, you might think about University of Memphis, but you'll forget about Lane College and more and more. And, you, know, you keep going, you'll forget about, you know, Philander Smith and Little Rock, Arkansas. You'll you forget about, as, as Therese says, nobody knew about Knoxville College in Knoxville, Tennessee, because we're overshadowed by the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So just just that, just sometimes it's the smaller institutions that get overshadowed. And those guys, got, those students, I shouldn't say guys, those students have to work hard. 
So, but coming out of Michigan, coming out of Flint, um, what made you pick Bethune Cookman over all? Because you took a long trek south and <laughs> passed a lot of HBCUs and, and schools in general to get to Bethune. She said the warm climate. Hey, it's it's warm climates. It's it's warm climates. Once you get once you get out of Michigan, it gets a little warm. But but I'm saying you see you do it better. Like I mean, I, I snow it. beach, snow beach. Like I mean, I get it. But though it's underwater, I get that. I get that. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of HBCUs like between Michigan and Bethune. Like, how did you pick Bethune over everybody else? Uh well for Other me, like I said. That part. Yeah, no, I mean, Florida. I've always been a fan of Florida. Um, you know, I, I I just always wanted to go south, didn't know where south. Um, my family's from Tennessee, so I knew kind of like, eh, hey, UT, Pat Summit wasn't checking for me at the time, so that was out the window. Um, at the same time, you know, I'm all about free 99, so I was on a basketball scholarship to the Green Green University on yeah. the beach in Florida. I'll take it. Yeah. She said so she they checked all the boxes. Yeah, it did. did. Three ninety nine. When she said that, I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." She's <laughs> so, where in Tennessee is your family from? Uh, Dyersburg. Dyersburg is out. Uh, that's it's a little Tennessee. bit northeast of Memphis. I have some family in Memphis too. I got you. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Because my uh, my mother and father both are from Nashville, Tennessee. Gotcha. So when you yes. said Tennessee, like we might be related. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We, we, everybody, everybody does. Cousins. You know, I used to go to Tennessee, Tennessee for the summer, summer you know, pick peas with my aunt, deliver the newspapers, and garden, and yeah, so I got a little horticulture in me. No, okay, I got, I got a green thumb. Go ahead on now. <laughs> so, how do you juggle? So, we're going to talk about your businesses. Um, so there's two, yeah. and you have Mitch Match Ventures, which I think is the most creative name. <laughs> um, it's a consulting firm. Yes, ma'am. Mitch, Mitch Match Ventures is my consulting arm. Um, you know, after so long, you know, working in collegiate athletics at numerous levels and working in professional sports at the highest level, um, I always get the can I pick your brain or can you do this and can you show me how to? So I'm like, shoot, okay, like yeah. Sometimes that mini turned into an hour, and an hour turned like, uh, then you want me to introduce you to my network? Like, okay. Pockets ain't got no fat of them, but they keep asking questions. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I like it. I like this. Yeah. That's kind of my consulting baby to just, you know, provide services in this space of education, recreation, and sports. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't take um, my path lightly, and what I mean by that, like I said, I was one of a few women in the country that served as the director of football operations, and, um, you know, especially when I went to the league, you know, I didn't take that lightly either, because again, I got to the league before some men, so that was kind of the thought process of I had to be mindful of the torch I was carrying, um, at the same time, I had to protect myself, too, because, again, when you in certain areas and rooms, people love to pick at you to benefit for them. You know, people, you know, sometimes have their hand out for the wrong reasons. I'm a giver myself, so that's not an issue for me, but I want to have good intentions because I know a lot of my mentees that are looking to serve in collegiate athletics or professional sports um, and want those opportunities, people like to grab on you when they need something, but be mindful when you need something too. And that's a hard string for me to pull back and to reach back and pull forward. Gotcha, gotcha. That, it is tough when people, where it's not, the, the, the relationship's not reciprocal. That's, right. that's tough. Yeah, I can get that. Because I'm going to pick your brain on some things off camera, but I think, I think that I think that I think it's always dope to have a consulting business because people will, people will ask you questions, but they don't never want to pay for your service. Like, like if you're an attorney, oh, they're gonna get you for a lot of attorney questions, a lot of legal questions. Mm -hmm. Like, so I definitely understand that. Not that I'm an attorney, but I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that out there. I'm thinking I'm out there studying law, my part, my part time. And then the second one is Invisible Giants. Mm. Yes, Invisible Giants Legacy and Leadership Foundation is my uh, nonprofit based here in the state of Michigan. Um, our board, we are some professionals who love to do work behind the scenes. That's why we chose the name of Invisible Giants. 
Um, for us, we provide the Flint community with resources via education, registration, sports and athletic equipment, uh, training, and just educational opportunities that they otherwise might not have been able to afford. And we also host a successful NFL flag league throughout the year, uh, mostly in the summer and sometimes in the winter uh, in an indoor field that we have here in Flint. Uh, and we just provide great fun for students, young girls and boys to have opportunities to uh, participate in uh, health, wellness, and recreation. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask this next question. It's going to be an obvious one. What made you so passionate about football? Because because I'm be, I'm be, this is gonna be sexist. It's the sexist part of it. Most women like basketball. They they're not they're not football fans. So when, would, so to find a football fan, it's like oh hey, that's you know it's a vibe. I wouldn't necessarily say I liked football. I like the ah. operations and administrative process behind the scenes. Because again, what I think people forget about, they see the uniforms, they see the glitz and glamour, they see the team with the, you know, how do they care? How do they eat? What was the pregame meal? Like it's a whole ball game behind the scenes, and that's what I admire on any sport and any level, the operations and administrative side of the house. I'm yep. glad you brought that up because you talked about Coach Prime saying uh, uh, getting the call to ball. Prime also, Coach Prime also talked about uh, money games. He's he's a real he's a real, real uh, he would not say real. He's against money games, but he's against, he's also against money games and how they are being paid. So he used, for example, Alabama State going to play US UCLA and the money that they got. So. With those money, and this is and this is what I've always thought, and he said something that was completely off what I thought. He was saying the money that they got, they still had to get there, they still had to eat, they had to lodge. I thought that that money that they got was money to play the game. Everything else, as far as the the uh, the, the operations part, was paid for by UCLA, and that money that they got went straight was an in, injection of cash into their program. And I'm hearing, nope, that's not it. They gave you this amount of money to pay and for all the had to, stuff. Stuff had to come out of that. Yeah, so I thought it was different. I, I didn't think that was the case. I thought it was. They gave you this money. They paid for everything else. Boom, let's go play. And you're saying, what he's saying is that's not the case. So, Ms. Mitchell, let me know. Yes and no. Uh-oh. It's all about negotiation. Okay. Um, all about knowing your value, your number. You know, of course, you know, there's, uh, you know, equity between Power Five, Group of Five, SCS, high major, mid major, whatever label you want to put on it. Right. But it all depends on what people forget about is to, you know, we play some of those high profile schools. They want the band to come, they want the cheer to come. It's a whole experience. They want the experience. So sometimes those things can be negotiated in the contract to be taken care of, i.e. hotel room, i.e. buses, i.e. meals. So there are opportunities for those things to be negotiated within that number. At the same time, some of it is not. But then when you, you know, speak on the HBCU perspective, when you have administration and alumni and, you know, the university come out the woodwork of people wanting to travel and be in the number. So unless you have a strategic plan and thought process of, as the basis travel, trying to maximize the finances for that particular contract, that's when you get into the, oh, yeah, well, we got 400000 but we're going to L.A., we eat three times a day, we're traveling 150 people, like. That 590 is gone. Quick. Yeah. yeah. Quick. So, yeah. But then See, I'm also, oh, go ahead. No, but no, then no, I, look, I look at two, so. Let, we'll use like FAMU and UNC as an example mm-hmm. when they went because they had a whole like halftime production with the bands. So but, in that instance, I'm sure there was negotiation because then the halftime show wouldn't have made. Correct. So it's like, y'all gonna have to show up. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I still think there's an opportunity because for us, I'm I am not a fan when schools or events or situations tries to and forgive this term, pimp the culture. That's um, you I like it. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes you don't get a shirt made with pimp, pimp, don't pimp the culture on it. That's good. You want to, you want the experience, but you don't want to pay for it. Just mm-hmm. like I stated in why my consulting business is really yeah. Of course, help people, but right. at the same time, you know, leave my money on the dresser. You know, so it's just, it's tough to see. I get it, but at the same time, I think people sometimes forget the history bus, bus behind certain contracts or schools playing each other. Uh-huh. They're in North Carolina, Duke, you and uh, Duke, and, and, and North Carolina Central. That was a secret game. Girl, you know I can go to town. I had even on last week. You could ask her, but I know, I know. Mm-hmm. At the same time, don't patchwork me for what you're trying to get for what we got, and you ain't trying to pay for it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, don't pimp the culture. I like that. When you use that. Yeah. So, so let's talk about it. Like, so, Coach Prime also stated. Appalachian State went to Texas A&M and got $1.4 million. Yep. So I'm throwing numbers out now because I'm looking at the, the disparity. You went from Alabama to the, to the West Coast and got 590. You went from North Carolina to Texas and got 1.4. So how does, and you're going to say negotiations, but how does a Power 5 school and an FBS, App State is FBS, FBS, I believe, go to play a Power 5 school at 1.4 and an FCS school go play a Power Five and get five ninety. That just seems that seems like more than pimping culture. That seems like uh, you know you you know, hey, I'm gonna give you this to come do that. That that seems like uh, I hate to say it like that seems like you know that seems like tricking right there. Well, it's it's all about to the value that they see for your program. Um, you also have to look at kind of what's the factors, the strength of schedule, you know, who you're playing, the value. Mm-hmm. The school, D1, AA, you know, all of these little terminologies to why they try to put those brackets on those schools and institutions. Mm-hmm. At the same time, App State had the resume of upsetting some big time people last Thank year. You. Year ago, Thank I'm you. from Michigan. I ain't mean with that. App State, Michigan in the big house. Yeah, yeah. So they, were, they were one AA at that time. Exactly. So it's those type of things to where they put their value on what they want to put their value on. And I believe that with continued thought process through conferences, commissioners, athletic directors, alumni, uh, and and presidents, this is going to take a concerted effort for everyone to put their heads together to find out what's our best solution, our best lane to navigate that space. Because again, we wonder why we can't go and travel for a national championship or the playoffs, so to speak. We lose money in playoffs. At the same time, if we're looking to be in the national rankings, if we're looking to have a college football playoff, create our own. One game D1, one game D2, one game D3, all in one location, two, three days, and figure it out. Let's have a whole HBCU cultural weekend. I like that. I like that. I like that. So you said this. And I want to hear you say it again. You said going to the playoffs, they lose money. Correct. So speak on that, because I, 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 again, when Jackson State went to the Celebration Bowl and played South Carolina State last year, Fam went to the playoffs. Correct. So everybody was like, "Oh man, Fam should have gone." Jackson. Talk about why Fam went and Jackson State. Oh, well, fam was in the NBA. Talk about why South Carolina State didn't go. Because I want to hear this. Well, to my knowledge, um, there's a contractual obligation for the winner of the MEAC and the winner of the SWAC to participate in the Celebration Bowl. Okay. I don't, I'm not privy to, and I'm not going to you know, take this with a grain of salt, but those two teams have to compete in the Celebration Bowl. And that's the contract that they have had in place and then you triple down to the second place or third placing if you get chose. Because mm. when we were there, we were a game in some situations with North Carolina a and and we didn't get to go. Or North Carolina a and 
Like, like it's, it's always been a situation to where you hope they call your name because again, the celebration bowl is the MEAC and the SWAC giving up their automatic qualifier. Right, right, right. So you have to keep that in mind too of the behind the scenes negotiations of what that looks like. Yes, you can still go to the playoffs, but it's not a guarantee. But the celebration bowl is a guarantee with a certain financial stipend for not only both institutions playing, but also the conferences. The conferences benefit off the celebration bowl. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's just our give and take because again, would you rather not have the celebration bowl? Would you rather go to the playoffs, which you lose money for? People rarely show up because they send you off to Wyoming. It right. doesn't make sense. So yeah. Pick your poison. Yeah, yeah. Cause I know in basketball, like if, if Texas Southern goes wins the SWAC, Texas Southern goes play in the plays in the in the Perfect. play in the game, they win the playing game, they go get beat up by by number one in the tournament, and then the SWAC get money because Texas Southern went to the uh NCAA tournament. Right. So but in but in football, you're saying it's different. But in football, it's kind of the same way. If they go to the celebration bowl, they all get money. Correct. Right. To a certain extent, the two schools participating get them get the majority, but it goes back to your first question. Some of that money you gotta do logistics and planning to go to Atlanta. You gotta get there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we talked about the like implications, financial things when it comes to the football teams and everything. We talked about the consulting. The Little Giants, we spoke on a little bit. Now, that's where my passion is, because I'm, I'm about to come to Flint and have a and have a Bible with y'all. I'm just letting you know that right now. Because even with our platform for the podcast and some of our ventures within DTR, we love the boots on the ground, making sure that we're out in our community. Yes. So I am, I'm so excited and I, I, I'm looking forward to being a part of it. Oh yes. Oh yes. Invisible Giants is near and dear to my heart. Um, this past summer, we actually got a grant from Disney, the National Recreation and Park Association uh, for enhancing our park because we are park adopters here in Flint, Michigan. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been an a honor to serve my community to help make it better. You know, again, you know, my founder of Bethune Cookman University, uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, she's always said we've always had a enter to learn and depart to serve. And I didn't take that lightly, uh, even though I was way in Florida, Jason, it's OK. Um, but, you know, I saw you use the quote from her on your website. Yep. Oh, yeah. Always, mm -hmm. always. You know, because, again, she started a school with a dollar and 50 cent. And, you know, I always could consider myself one of Mary's girls. So who am I to? stop that legacy that she paved the way for me. So that's my thought process through Invisible Giants to help my Flint community uh, in various capacities, such as Mary McLeod with them. And I think like how we're all linked. So my grandma was, um, went to Bethune and she was there when Mary McLeod with them was alive and hand signing uh, grades. So I just think, you know, the legacy just continues to live on. No question. No question. I mean, it's it gives me chills and goosebumps uh, on various things that I do or that's affiliated with Bethune Cookman or things that I do in the community. Um, I have some of her quotes all around my house and in my trophy case um, with some of my memorabilia from various stops. And uh, she's in there as well, because, again, you know, being being a Mary's girl isn't for the, the faint of heart. Um, you're you're put on. Uh, you know, a task to serve your community. And that's what I intend to do uh, here in Flint throughout um, corporate America and through being, you know, a, a resource for young ladies who, who majority of look like me that want to take the path that I took, you know, even though it was some sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, people forget the sacrifice part. Don't look at the glitz and glamour because you're going to miss some holidays. You're going to miss some family. You're going to miss some birthdays because if you want this life, you know, you got to be willing to do the work. Do you see yourself um, leaving Michigan again? I never say never. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband has been very supportive. Um, you know, he works here in the state of Michigan as well. Um, and I have two bonus children. Uh, so I don't take that lightly. At the same time, I never say never. It has to be the right situation, the right person in the right role. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be have to be an authentic role to where I can continue to serve and help people, 
you know, advance or help the program. Because again, at North Carolina Central back in 2014, 2016, 18, people are doing now what we did back then. But that's what legacy lead leaders do. So it's an honor. It ain't like, oh, we they Biden, they we did this in 2016. <laughs> it's, it's all good. I mean, you know, it's all good to be a trendsetter. You know, HBCU love, no shade. Everybody eating. Right. Right, right. So look, so I, I gotta answer this question. I, and I wanted to ask this question last week, but I didn't think about it to uh, to just now. Um tell me about your thoughts on Title IX. Because everybody, it's like me as a male athlete who who grew up. Title Nine came out. It was it was it, it. I was a. I won't say affected, but I was in that beginning stages of Title Nine of the Title Nine legislation. So for me, I saw a lot of push towards females playing sports. My question is, how? Do you see Title IX? And is it being affected in its in its uh, in its uh, role? Um, I definitely think Title IX is a benefit for all, you know, especially for women, um, because again, some of the game changers and some of the legislation that's going on right now were empowered and footed in root through women. So it's an opportunity for us to really get that opportunity through paper, through documentation, like I said, put it in writing, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's, you know, dedicated an opportunity and experience for them to have an opportunity and a, and, and a chance, you know, it's a great opportunity for not only collegiate athletics, but, you know, workplace culture, you know, that it's important as well. So it's just, I think it's a good thing. I think students and universities can benefit from it. I think it's a reflection of the campus and their thought process of what's priorities. I think people's priorities are exposed. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for, you know, organizations and students and, and universities to check themselves and be like, hey, where do we stand? And do you care where you stand? Because if you, one of these schools who, hey, wins, losses, show me the money, that Title IX gonna eat you up on documentation when it comes to reporting time. So definitely be sure that your school and your institution is in line, but otherwise you will be exposed. So with Title IX, it's based, so I'm make sure I'm clear on this, but Title IX is not so much saying you have to have, you have to have the same number of women's sports as you have men's sports. No, not necessarily. It goes off different metrics, depending on the size of your institution, depends on your state. It's a whole lot going on and it's a federal mandate. Uh, so it's not kind of like, oh, well, because we got eight men's sports, we need eight women's sports. That's not how it be. It goes off your, your uh, geographic uh, um, footprint on your campus. Uh, okay. So it's definitely an opportunity for, you know, the federal uh, side of the house to make sure that you're not discriminating, you know, on, on any basis, just off, you know, especially getting federal funding. Uh, so it's an opportunity for, again, the checks and balances to be sure you're being equitable across across the board. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah. Great, great, great. Answer. Uh, uh, I, I like to learn more about Title IX. It's, 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 to me, it's a great uh, I'm, I'm not big on, I'm not big on keeping, doing a whole bunch for, for men's sports and doing nothing for women's sports. I think both of them, are, you know, for me, like you, like I watch women's basketball, you, you may not see them dunk, but it's competitive. They, they, they shoot threes. They, they run they to me, they run more offensive sets than most men's basketball teams do because men are just like, uh, off the rim and go. Women's basketball is more uh, half court offense scheme. Oh yeah, fundamentals. That's it. That's fund I say that all the time. That's what it goes back to. That's some of the guys watch watch the girls game because again we are competitive. We compete just as much as the guys do. I grew up in Flint, Michigan. Like I said, I can run a whole resume of guys who was balling: Glenn Rice, Andre Rice, and Deanna Nolan. Like Tanya Edwards. Like I said, that's my Tennessee connection. Like I said, past some it ain't called, but. I had, I could see it. My you coach, went to college on the beach, though. I'm just saying, though, past some, it was like, yo, I'm going to Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. You true. know, yeah. in my head, I went to Knoxville, but, you know, <laughs> in my heart, I went to Bethune Cookman. Right, 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 right. You, you made the right choice. You made the right choice. You got to go to college on the beach. You got to go to Black Beach weekend. Yeah. 
Yeah. VCR, if you know, you know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you ain't had no videos. You ain't had no camcorders. Well, they had camcorders was just rolling out, but you know. I was... <laughs> but you, but you saw the camera coming, and you knew. <laughs> don't get on camera. That's all I'm saying. If you don't understand that statement, you probably got caught on camera. <laughs> no Polaroids either. You know. <laughs> I got a Polaroid from that weekend in my Bible to this day. When I say great weekend, great weekend. Change your life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> great weekend. Great weekend. So, Michelle, so, what does the future look like for you in the next two, five, ten years? Mm. If you were able to order your steps. Mm. I let the Lord order my steps, but, you know, mm. I'm wide open. Um, I'm at a point in my career and in my life, I have a supportive family. Um, I've been around the sun. You know, I've done a lot that I've wanted to do collegiately. Power Five, HBCU, FCS, Group of Five, however you want to name it. Mm -hmm. And I've been to the highest level of sports in the NFL. So for me, I'm letting the Lord order my steps, especially through my community ventures. I love serving and helping people. Uh, I love helping young women who navigate this uh, athletic space. You know, a couple interns in the NFL. One of my interns just uh, got a role with the Fritz Pollard Alliance, who's also the uh, accounting arm of the NFL for DEI efforts. So to seeing those women get jobs and flourish, because again, for me, you know, I don't call myself an old head, but I call myself seasoned. Mm -hmm. You know, I can help I can help you navigate certain waters without having that pitfall because you don't have someone that you can connect with and count on just as a resource. You know, control control your own destiny, control your own narrative. And that's what I'm about. I never had people control my situation, so to speak. And you know, I, I took some bumps and bruises you know, leaving my kids or my coaches at certain stops, you know, and North Carolina Central was one of them, but I knew what my path was. And when I got that call to ball to go to the NFL, I had to answer that call. Yeah, I know. Yeah. When, I, when I found out that you were leaving, I was like, into where? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. When you said you was in the NFL, like, yo, I, you're talking about, you got there before most guys. I was like, yo, you got there before I did. Like, I'm... <laughs> No question. It's a gift and a curse because some people be like, oh, what you, oh. Nah, I, I, I've, I've always been a humble person. Mm -hmm. Nah, but it's a, it's, that's a, that is a, that's, that's, that is every, but I'm not saying every, that was Jason Redman's dream coming out of Houston, Texas. Like, I want to go to the league, but the reality, the reality of playing in the league came real quick uh, in college. And then to some, the dream was dead, but like you're talking about operations. Like to me, that's where the conversation stops. It stopped when I was in school, but it needs to keep going because, hey, you know, coming out of high school, maybe you don't get recruited to be a, a, a star athlete at a college. Maybe you go to college and become a grad assistant and start coaching. Maybe you get, and I heard one of the coaches say this, um, and I was like, coach, I never thought about being a grad assistant in undergrad, that's 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 uh that's 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 genius. Good thing for better no words. And that's what I enjoy about um, Mitch Match Ventures, um, and two, Dr. Kiki Baker Barnes, the former AD of Dillard University, and now the commissioner uh, uh, for the uh, HBCU conference. That's one of her programs. So you want a career in athletics, and it mm -hmm. teaches young ladies about careers outside of coaching and playing. There's HR, legal, oh, operations. She's good. Oh, yeah, that's one of my mentors. So I definitely think students need to learn more about different roles that are available. At the league office, we had 32 teams with player engagement, player development. Like, we had so many different avenues that these students didn't know. And one point of pride for me is a student who was a graduate assistant at Bethune-Cookman University, Terry Braden who's now the defensive assistant coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was our intern at the Pro Bowl in Orlando from Bethune-Cookman. Now he's a Super Bowl winning coach from the Kansas City Chiefs who interned with us at the Pro Bowl in Orlando. Now he works for the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, and like, I can't make this stuff up. Just off of internship, relationships. It goes back to what I told you earlier, relationships.
Yeah, yeah. This this is a uh, this has been great. I mean, I have been personally touched. This is amazing. Like, yeah, Flint, Michigan. It's about Jason. No, no question. No, it's not about me. It's not about no I, about I think, being touched. No, but it's touching somebody. Like that's the yeah. purpose. Is and you know not you. We don't care about you. No, I'm shucking. I know y'all care about me. <laughs> But my point is, like, the information is so, like, the, again, I got to tell my players, like, hey, man, you guys got to, you know, think beyond the box. Like, we, you know, my dad used, used to always say, give me four years, I'll change your life. And by changing your life, I mean, like, hey, give me out of, get, you out, get, get me out of my situation for four years. The, the landscape's going to change. I won't know it when I get back, and I won't want to do the same things I did when I was there. Because right. my mind is changing. I'm going to say it's all about that thought process. No yeah. question. And you got to be willing to accept your weaknesses and your strengths, too. Mm-hmm. Because if you know everything, then why are you talking to me? Exactly. You know, so at the same time, I think some students and just, you know, professionals in general, yes, it's okay to listen and talk, but, you know, figure out which one best works for your situation or what you're trying to do at that particular time. Yeah, yeah. I like your statement. If you know everything, why are you talking to me? I like that. I'm going to use that, too. I'm definitely using that just to, yeah. Yeah. put it on your tab. Hey, yeah, yeah. Don't pimp the culture as a shirt. And, and, yeah. and if you know everything, why are you talking? To me? Yeah. It's gonna be like if you know everything on the front, it's like why are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> on the back. That's on the back. Yeah. 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 yeah so I um one thing we ask all our guests to do is to leave like a nugget, a word of advice for the week for our listeners and viewers. So just to put you on the spot a little bit more. <laughs> One piece of advice. Whew. I tell my mentees all the time. My student athletes too, uh, at various stops, because again, sometimes I think they forget the process, but don't think you the only one trying to be the only one. Mm. And what I mean by that is there's other people that wants that internship. There's other people that wants to work for that team. There's other people that wants to coach, play, catch, do operations for coach, whoever, or president, whoever, but don't think you're the only one going after that opportunity. So what sets you apart is your work ethic, is your communication, is your attention to detail, is your, just your thought process, your energy, your aura, because how you treat people, how you communicate to people and the work that you do with a sense of urgency and assistance, uh, a, attention to detail that matters mm-hmm. and every opportunity that I've had is because of those things because I understood I got to be on the grind my, my my big homie Mateen Cleves always say keep your mind right keep your grind tight mm. another one. <laughs> another one well mm. I thank you I am always. so happy that you came mm. to to enlighten us and just to share what's going on. And again, Mitch, Mitch Match Ventures. Yes. And Little Giants. And there's some other Invisible words. Invisible Giants. I mean, Invisible, like, yeah. not Little yeah. Giants, that's the movie. That's a movie. <laughs> I love the movie yeah, though. Yeah. Invisible Giants. <laughs> yep. Invisible Giants Legacy and Leadership Foundation. Yes. So, yep. Foot, Michigan, and home of MC Bree. Ain't no future in your front. They yeah, right, 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 oh, right, yeah. right, right. I just wanted to know I knew a little something about a little something. Yeah, I just wanted to know that. I got yeah. you. I knew what you meant. It's okay. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Tupac was here too. Got to get mine. You know. I got you. I got to get yeah, yeah. Got to get yours. Hey, so my question before you go: What's the next event you guys are gonna have? Because uh, you know, because Sharice didn't say this, but you know, I would love to come participate. <laughs> And then one of the events you all have. <laughs> well, for me, um, as I stated, I just got back from JSU. Holy smokes. They, Co- uh, Ashley Robinson and Coach Prime has it popping down at JSU. Uh, but for me, next up, <clears throat> I head to uh, Norfolk State and Elizabeth City for our internship opportunities at Rocket Companies. We have paid internships with paid housing in the D. I don't know what school or what companies you know were paid internships to pay housing, but we do at Rocket Companies. Uh, at the same time, I'll also be at the Gramlin State and Alcorn State game on Saturday with President Gallo. 
uh, A.D. Scott down there at Gramlin State University. As I stated, we're official sponsor for the athletic department at Gramlin State University. So uh, that's where I'll be this week. And then, of course, coming up, Florida Classic, Bethune-Cookman, FAMU, Hail Wildcats, and two. And Wildcats. Wildcats. That's in Orlando, isn't it? Yes, it yeah. is. Back in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Was that, was that Polk County? No, Orange County. Orange, Orange County. County. Okay, okay, okay. I was so close. I was you close. close. You know, you down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want you to know a little. I get. I know a little something. I know a little something. You was on the recruiting trail. You was on the recruiting trail. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Okay. I hear, I hear. Having moved to Florida, that's all everybody's talking about right now. And so it's like, so street. So you going? I'm like, I don't know if I want to venture that by myself. Let me get a group of people in this seat, but not by myself. <laughs> I went to yeah. Florida Classic when it was in Tampa. And when I say yes. it's massive. Yeah, massive. we used to have the Florida, we used to have the Florida Classic at the NASCAR Stadium in Daytona. I think that'd be kind of dope. Because I passed by, I've been down to that NASCAR Stadium. I give you a little nugget. With the Bethune Cookman going to the swag, don't be surprised. Some games is at NASCAR Stadium in Daytona. I'm just saying, I can see that. I can see that. I can I'm see just that. a little birdie. I don't know nothing. Hey, <laughs> right, little birdie. I'm just saying, little birdie, that I think the NASCAR stadium could hold more people than they're going to hold in Orlando. So that would be a slide right there. Because that's not, it, it's home field advantage for Bethune because it's in Daytona, but still. It's still technically neutral ground. It's the experience. Yes, the game is number one. It's the experience that matters mm -hmm. for the old and the young, for them to come and see the offering of the Zone Cookman University. So I'm just oh. saying. Yeah, we gotta we gotta chit chat. Uh, Mitch, we're gonna definitely chit chat because <laughs> anytime I, I, wanna, I wanna not not just the con I'm I'm a, I'm a, I want the free consulting for the first time, but I want to see. I want, want to see. The a, a, no, no, I want to see the collaboration. <laughs> I want to see the collaboration happen. I think there's some great things happening between uh, dreams to reality, and I think with your with your uh, collect with your uh, little giant hidden giants. Invisible. Don't give me two more LLCs and not five hundred one c three. Invisible giants. So with invisible giants, dreams to reality. And the um, mismatch, was it mismatch consulting? Mismatch ventures. Yeah. Mismatch ventures. I see some collaborations that we should we should talk about. So just FYI. All right, discount code. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna have my uh, my my. Uh, hey, your my people business. call my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have my business partner Sheree set the meeting. Up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, no, no, not a problem. So that's awesome. Cool, cool. You ready? So, hey man, I hate to, I hate to, I hate to leave, man. This is like, this is like, you know, a old, uh, uh, group of old folks talking at the coffee table right here, man. But yes, take us out of here, Sharice. Take us out of here. So if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and continue following us on our journey because we have a lot more amazing episodes to come. We are DTR Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared towards uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I want to thank my amazing co-host, Jason Redman, and the phenomenal Jashun Mitchell for joining us. Oh, uh, I, I see you now. I see you. You better get <laughs> Already. Yeah. Remember our goal is not to be better than anyone, but together we could be better for everybody. Thank you and have a good night.